when I put this up there we're gonna have to take disconnect that one loop it around that side of the gunned all these little paddle pop sticks to the same spot where I leveled up before. I've measured down 50 mil, same, same thing I did last time except upside down and level. And now I can shoot the laser around and see what I've got to do. I'll try to attach some photos because that's all I'm going off. But to make it look like the French version, of the 25 foot Bertram, this bit here has to be flat. No, it can't, it's not, got no crown. And then from here all the way, it, 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 it rounds like that. So I've probably got to cut a big chunk of fiberglass out here, which is why I'll have to flip it back the other way after I've fiberglassed and modified the top, cut the hatch out. I don't know, I'm going to, before I put it on the deck, I'm gonna do everything while it's down low and easy to get to. So I'll, I'll have this ready. This'll, this'll all be painted and modified and fared back. All the gunnel will be fared back and painted. So, because at the moment I can paint this really easy. My, I'm limited with space. Yeah, uh, I feel like I'm getting somewhere. The thing I'm struggling with at the moment is on the Bertram that I want to, uh, the French version I want to copy, um, it comes up like this about 50 mil. I don't know, just like looking at all the pictures and, and like this whole window area is, is flat. So at the moment, I've got this huge curve in the whole bow of the boat. Um, ignore this dash area. Eventually, uh, I'm going to have like an L-shaped lounge 
like that. And uh, I wanted to have a bigger opening into the, the V-bird. So that level there from here to there is good. So that means I've got the levels pretty good that way and that way. The front of the dash is different though. It's like, because I chopped it there, stupidly. I, um, yeah, when I, when I lift that up, it, it looks about the same, but it's a little bit different at the moment. And the back is uniform as well. The curve is uniform. I wonder if this is how the Frenchies did it. I'm sure they wouldn't have had a laser. But uh, yeah, if I laser up that bit, hopefully I can edit this video good enough so I'm explaining everything properly. But I, I, I pretty much have to cut that crown out and it's going to have an 800mm wide flat window in the middle that will pop up like that and then these two bits from the 800 mil will curve back yeah. and you can see why I like it better it, it just it looks more modern the French know how to build them sexy it probably would have been cheaper and easier and faster if I just imported one but anyway, uh, it's too late now. Got to keep going. So this is another thing I'm going to struggle with is I've got to build this whole bit up level and on a curve and I need to build it up about 85 mil, which looks about right if you look at the pictures, which is all I can go from. And... <laughs> it's 110 back here it even looks like that on 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 the pictures if you study it heaps it looks like the the windows tilt forward maybe that's because when the bertram's on the plane all the bertram's i see are sitting in the back heavy like that <laughs> and like it's it'll be a nightmare to see out of um out of the boat when you're driving from underneath and uh, I might not have that problem because I've got so much extra weight. So everything has got a curve on it. I know why they ended the windows here is because the deck goes like that. That's, you know, like a gradual up the whole way from there to there. And then it also curves this way, that way. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what you can get away with with the windows if you can get a bit of a curve with the windows on the flat ones, but... I'd rather keep it straight. Anyway, I'm um, taking a long time to do anything here because I'm thinking about what I have to do. So I just bent this metal just to get a feel for what the perk specs will be capable of bending at. And um, in like I've been looking and looking and looking at the pictures, but um, it actually, it, Flatten, you know, like it, you want it to be as flat as you can up there and then just meet into that nice, which will be co completely flat. So it looks like I need to cut out about that much. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with um, 
the curve in the gunnel that way on this bit. I just need to start building and then do it, but I just overthink everything and just procrastinate and think of all the what ifs and you never get anywhere thinking like that. It's, uh, I just got to do it. So I needed to get an approximate curve so I'd know how far I have to extend this gunnel up because I've got limited, well, I've got lots of wood, but the, the chunk that I'm, I've got at the moment, if I split it in two is 2050, so it'll come close. Building, building this gunnel up with wood is going to be the easiest solution as far as I can think. The only downfall is it's going to be out of wood because that's all I've got, but it is good hardwood. And um, you will only be able to screw the windows down with screws unless you can get bolts that are like 110 mil or longer than 110 mil long. Okay, so if that's meant to be what it looks like and then curve down, I think I've gone a little bit too high. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing I'll have to rake it up that way. That means the window level isn't level with the gunnel being level. So I'll try and reference from the gunnel to there on the pictures. That's with the flip wood flipped over. It still looks wrong. Sometimes you just got to cut through the nails to get somewhere. It looks a lot better. I've made the window about 20 mil higher than what it used to be, but it will actually be shorter because the, the gunnel will come, the sides will come up a little bit further. So you can see it's going to be a little bit higher, the roof will be, but I I'm, I'm still want to keep the same um, kind of look and the window will be 
so the windows will be a little bit longer and the roof is going to be a bit longer and you can see from there <laughs> and i have spent a long time like a lot of time procrastinating or like overthinking the heck out of everything because these two pieces of wood are going to add about 10 kilos to the top. It's 10 kilos, but it's all going to add up. But, uh, like, I have to remember that I've got to put actuators in here, so these pillars are going to be slightly wider, and I think that it's going to be beneficial if I keep the hardwood fiberglassed in to here um, so I can mount the actuator to the side because the actuator needs to come up vertically and the top comes in like that so that's why i need to bring it out like that so the the actuator can come up at 90 degrees otherwise the the two actuators will be going against each other like that at the back the front ones I'll think about that after the top's on and everything. And then I'll um, give it a bit of a curve and then it'll go to that pillar, which I'll make that pillar a separate panel um, so I can uh, remove it uh, and, and, and then I need to make it so it'll have like a panel on this side that I can fit the actuator and everything in. And to do the deck, I'm just going to make a, a big square sheet of fiberglass. I'll probably use some of the core mat to beef it up a bit. And uh, I'll, I'll do a big flat sheet on the floor, which is level. I'll need to chisel off all the, the chunks of resin and stuff on the floor anyway. And, uh, and then I've got to figure out the curve, which is why I had, uh, I've got the sheet metal. I'm, I'll try and make the sheet metal um, the kind of window bend. If I can bend the window to the, and, and like get an approximate shape with the sheet metal, um, that that I'm I'm hoping if I can do it with the sheet metal, I'll be able to do it with the perspex, or the window guy will be able to do it with the perspex. Oh, I should really speak to him, but yeah, I I just feel like if I. Uh... And the other thing is, instead of having the curved dash like that, I'm going to have my dash flat because I don't want to have a cheese platter. I want it to be able to hold cartons of beer or something I just so it doesn't slip off. Just put your bottle in. Yeah, I'll put cup holders and that in it. <laughs> It'll actually give me more head height running it level, uh, running it flat with the windows because I'm going to scallop that dash bit okay so I've tried lots of different holes I've tried more than that on the other side but like of just like getting string and then going from where I think the window ends from the pictures that I have on my phone and then circling around to where I know the window stops in between the hatch and it it's an, an awesome looking curve but it's not the same curve as what's in the pictures i'm pretty sure it's different i'll show you so if you look at that there it's it it um the curve changes i'm pretty sure and it, it needs to go flat here and it needs to go flat here. And from every angle that I've gone so far, I always end up 
being sharp on a corner, so. I'm still gonna shape this. My guillotine only does 1200. Or a bit over 1200. But I really need to have it so it's angled down like that at the right angle. So I was thinking about, you know, hacking it back with the guillotine until I get the right shape. Put a circle on it now. The end of an era, no more control boards. <laughs> There's so much anger. Never to be used again. But it's got a great little motor. And that's what we're using. Yeah. It's a little bit hard fitting it in the box, but you'll make something. <laughs> yeah, I've got air again. Endless amounts. Connection bit, that's actually where it works. 1.1 amps, but that's at 12 volts and it's a 9 volt fan. So this one is different to that one. See that one got all thin ribbons? And that one has got a few big ones. So this one starts from this side and it's those first three or six pins and the first six pins are the, on those ones and they're bridged out. And I can even go backwards. <laughs> you just flick this to go backwards and then I can suck all the air out of the mask. Yep, handy. Hmm, I wonder which one you'd rather have. That one is a standard one with some mullet repairs. Or this one, that's $20. Just the battery for that is $500 without a charger. And then the charger is $600 without a battery. And then the filter is $100. And the whole unit is two and a half grand. 2,000. This is what you get for two grand. Cable. Cool. I'll um, I'll check it properly later. Look, they've got an itchy face. I remember the first time I had this apart. I went to so much. I was I put it together so so perfectly. I used the glue gun to squirt all around the corners, and I thought I was never going to have to open it up again. Little did I know. I would spend probably in the three years that I've owned all these air masks, if you add up all the hours that I've spent stuffing around with them, pussy footing around instead of just replacing the control the controller straight away and using the batteries the other batteries straight away, I you know, I would have saved weeks <laughs> I remember all the times where I wanted to grind and then I'd go to use a mask and it'd start beeping and I'd click the old battery in and out and in and out and in and out and after 30 minutes of 
clicking it in and out it would it would work and then and then i'd put it all on and then i'd get in get to the boat and bump it on a ladder or something and and then it'd beep and turn off again and then i wouldn't even do anything i'd just stop you know like i would just be crushed <laughs> should have done this a long time ago one thing i learned at Northfield Car Sound, it was like a place where you do cars, you install stuff in cars, and uh, you roll the tape up like this. And if you're in like a really tight spot, you can just wrap it around like that and get it really tight and neat, and it's real easy. And the other thing they taught me was that these are called car willies. These things. I just thought it's funny that they call them car willies. First test of the mullet versa flow. Then you just clip that. I like wearing the belt up high because it holds my back together and sucks my gut in. <laughs> it's like a good back support. So I've just done a shape of, of the what I think the windows are. I went back to using a string and um, I've actually set the, the straight back further. I don't know what I was thinking when I was trying to do it the other way. I was maybe thinking if I like held the string line at a fixed point higher than the, um, the surface, I could like get a different angle. Um, so, so it joins flat down there and there, um, but I, I think I'm overthinking it. I'm overthinking it regardless, but, uh, I think that window shape, I hope you can see that in the pencil line. I think it's all right. If you look at this, it looks like it curves straight from there and then around. Straight from there and around. There's not a curved bit. I'm just curious, is that, does it curve steeper? I wish the, the picture went down a little bit further. It's so annoying going through all the pictures and, and that. But uh, yeah, that's, so that middle window will be there and then curve like that. Thanks to Catboat for putting it on the internet. It took me ages to find, but this is perfect. And what I can do with Fusion 360, or what you can do with Fusion 360, is you can um, scale it, calibrate. I'll go from here to here. is 752 millimeters is what I'm gonna make it. There it is. The thing is, 
that isn't a circle there. It's uh, steeper than that. And it's, <laughs> this thing's gold. <laughs> That's a real measurement of it. So it's actually 7.46 meters long from there to there. And I've lasered everything. 3005 millimeters wide. And I did that so I can get the perfect scale for that. So I scaled this picture because it looks like the hatch. It's like the hatch. It might be smaller than what my hatch is. I scaled it from that corner to that corner. 975 and mine's only 820. Every time I scale this drawing, it blows out lengthways or widthways. It's not perfectly to scale, but at least it gives me a better idea of what the shape of the windows are. So to get this curve, I've been studying all the pictures, like I said, and um, I just uh, bent that. So I've just worked out something. I was just about to start cutting this after I showed you how I just did it. And um, I've just realized if you look at that bit there, it's pretty much the same as that bit there. So maybe the Frenchies or whoever designed it just got a pen and leveled this out and then just gone it looks like it could be right because that's a pretty straight line there i'm gonna give it a go after i uh fix the bertram i think i have to fix the roof in my house i don't want to say how long it's been sitting at this stage for, but uh, that's level enough. It's actually, it's got to go down a little bit there anyway. That's not right, but it should be good enough just to get this curve. And I'm going to just follow it all the way down there as well. I've been overthinking this to the hell. This is actually, uh, I'm, I'm very confident that this is going to be it. <laughs> I should have done this ages ago. Uh, I might use two hands. So I don't think it looks straight. I don't think it looks right being straight here. So I'm just using the fiberglass again to, to get a nice curve. Uh, so the best view is probably from here to see what I just did. I wonder if that's the right angle.
So I'm not happy with this. So I'm going to unbutton it from here and then tighten it up again. Fiddly. Does it look the same? Yeah, you got to remember that this is 16 mil higher. So once I get all of this um, fiberglassed so that it holds the shape, so it's all just hot glue gun there, it's arts and crafts to the max. <laughs> like, it's a full experiment, but uh, I'm pretty sure it'll work. So now I'm, I'll, um, I'll grind, I'll, I'll I'll grind up the top of this a little bit so I can wrap some glass down here so then it'll hold that angle and make these sheets a little bit more rigid and then I've got to flip it upside down and then the and then that's going to be my mold is upside down but first I want to put the bulges in that for the the GPS sounder and um, some speakers and air vents uh, for the demisters. That's another experiment. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but I'm a lot happier with um, how I got this. It's all tucked into the curve, which is completely symmetrical. It's not perfect down here on both sides it's not completely the same but it's it's really close um at least yeah, it'll be roughed in and then i'll uh i'll be able to glass it up and and then um i can fix all the the other bits up with bog That took about an hour and 30 minutes and I just used all the off cuts, but it was easy <laughs> and it, relaxing, it was good. So I haven't really explained, everything's a mess. I haven't explained, um, so I, I glued that down. I cheated and I used bog to continue that line up to here. I'm gonna have to do a lot of grinding tomorrow. Everyone knows I love that, so. Um, I, I kind of had to stop being so fussy. I, um, you know, I was getting levels and measuring from the floor and anyway, um, <laughs> what's worked out is I made a frame for this. You saw me do that. I haven't even screwed these legs. I've been trying to get everything done as fast as I can, even though it's taken me ages. It's embarrassing how long it's taken me to get here. But it's because it took me so long to decide on everything. But after I got this to the right height, so it's level that way, but it's leaning back, I think. Leaning back or leaning forward, I can't remember. Leaning back. Um, and I'm trying to continue it like that. So this is where the, the, the deck is going to be because uh, I'm going to flip this over. 
back to this. So I got this to the right height. I just got clamps holding everything and I was gonna screw it, but I never got around to it. And then I um, got what I thought was the right, that way forward. And then I put a screw there and a screw there. And that's holding it all together. And you can see I, I had a horsey over that side, but I needed it to cut stuff. So I've got a, a stool with a brick on it on that side. Uh, like the, the whole, this whole assembly is, re this whole thing, the scaffold, I should really build a proper one. But um, anyway, I'll, I'll keep going. It, it's pretty stable now with that. But what do you guys reckon that's the same curve as the, the Riva, Riva? And then because I'm making the roof come further back, I'm bringing that up at a harsher angle because my pillar is going to be around here. And the windows are going to stop nearly at the same spot. So while I've been sitting in bed, I've come up with a kind of idea I just wanted to try before I did it. I've got some conduit, 20 mil conduit, 25 mil conduit, sorry. I blanked one end up real bodgy with tape. This test took literally five minutes to set up. I blobbed my air thing in. I've got some more parts to fix the other two and I was thinking about using one of them to do um, like ventilation in the boat. And I was thinking that these could be window demisters. So if I fold this pipe, well not fold, if I bend this pipe um, in the dash area like this, around where the windows are going to go, and then I get a, um, two or three mil grinder blade and and plunge it in and then do it at the, do a cut like that. I was thinking maybe the air would blow up and um, demist the windows. So to get the condensation off in the mornings will help get it off. Um, so I'm just trying it now. Yeah, I, I did, tried doing a long run because I, I want it to be worst case because I don't know how much and air is definitely coming out I'm, I'm actually enjoying this bit thinking up little ideas and stuff Food ready. That looks poop. I gotta change it. I don't like this angle. I don't like how high it is. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna try and sink it into the dash more and blend it in better. It's really hard to imagine <laughs> how to make this look good. And, and to see if all this stuff works out. It's going to be a miracle. I think that looks a lot better. I've got to blend it and everything, but I've, I was thinking, like, if I knew, I still haven't got the sounder. I want to get the Axiom 9. I think it's a 9-inch. And um, I've got a Nexium monitor to go on the other side. So I was going to put the Axiom 
there and the other one there and that's gonna be the graphics user interface and uh, uh i'll blend it down like that or i'll go, go f i might go flat and like the more flat surfaces the better cup holder cup there will be a cup holder there too so the opening is going to be really big not that you can see it with all the junk there <sighs> but i think that angle's all right it's pretty hard to know <laughs> I'll probably always see that because the nose will be like that when it's on the plane. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for that time to happen. Every time I just start to get into it, it gets late. I was going to cut it in really close to the front windshield there because I thought it'd be nice to not hit my head when I come into the bed. But um, I was trying to think of different ways to have hatches go that way or like two little fans or some original way to do it. And the most obvious way is to just have sliders that go that way. So that's why I have to, that's why I, I need to continue this line here. And I think it'll look weird with the that like the the edges ending at different heights <laughs> so that's the passenger side and i've like that was out here i'm cutting it so the opening is a lot bigger So to get the curve, I'm going to try stretching some vinyl um, onto that face. We'll see how it goes. Well, that didn't work, so I'm going to try foam. Easy to form. I'll, um, yeah, I can form it <laughs> and that. Um, and then after I've got the shape that I like, I'll stretch the vinyl over that. That turned out pretty good and it didn't take long. So it's my favorite when things don't take long. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit rough, but after I, I fiberglass it, well, you know, like when I do the mold, I'll, I'll just touch it up then. But do you think that bulge is too much? I think it should be fine. Um, 
So that did not turn out as good as I thought. It all bubbled up. I don't know if the staples let go or the vinyl stretched when it had resin on it. But anyway, it's it's good enough form work for what I need. I can fix it up on the other side later. Hey, Squidge. Oh, yeah. I probably could have thickened up blow coat and done the same thing. This is unwaxed resin too, so I'll have to wait for it to harden and it'll probably clug the discs up when I'm trying to fare it at the start. But I've done it before and it comes out good. Cheap. Now I've got to stiffen it up around here because I need to take these out and, and when I flip it, it needs to all stay straight. What a masterpiece. I'm nearly ready to crack it off. I just got a few little spots that I gotta fix, but she's really blobbed together. I wonder how it turns out. <laughs> I'm trying to make this bit, so then, uh, I can't even explain it. <laughs> and I kind of stuffed up. I should have made that slightly wider because I want that to be a stubby holder. But then I was thinking about a, having a rail running over there and there so you can slide a hatch thing. It'll go clunk and then another level clunk. Just get it done. So that's what it's going to look like 
that's going to be the finished bit. So I, I've got to smooth stuff off and do something with this lip, lip here. But this should be easy. I'm not happy with this bit, so I'm going to change. So I've got to put a three mil sheet here before I can put one here. And then I can put a one here and there. Uh, I might not have to up there. But yeah, I'm just winging it, going as I go. This just, I keep admiring that. That looks beautiful. So this did help me, this blob that I put down here. But, but anyway, that's how you do it. So I just traced around that and the, you can't really see, but it, the pen hardly sticks to the melamine. So it's perfect for molds. So I did a test 
while I was doing all that because the melamine for the three mil is really, um, it's like a really fine coat. It's like rubber. I just wanted to make sure it didn't delaminate and it looks fine. But um, wherever I do an edge like that, like that, sorry. I can't just run wovens or cloth down it. But it didn't put release agent on some of them. Just to see, oh, that's why. <laughs> that one had a screw in it. <laughs> I wanted to do some thick ones to see how well it bonds to the end grain. It sticks pretty good. So I'll definitely tape the edges of the melamine. Uh, it's a bit messy up here, but I just wanted to demonstrate. So this is two sheets of triaxle. It's really stiff. And if I put this here, and put that there it charges so yeah that's what my plan is if, instead of recessing this into the fiberglass i'll have this underneath a recess in the fiberglass that the phone will blob into nicely and uh that way this epoxy thing won't it does, i don't have to make it waterproof or anything it'll be behind the dash It'll be easier too because I won't have to make more panels. Anything easy is good. And this is where the phones will go. There and there. And then, so I'll have fiberglass that goes over this. Only one sheet just in that area. I can even beef it up there and there. And even along the edges because that's where this thing will go. But like that. That's how I bo get both of them exactly the same. It's just rippy tape. Ta da! Nice smooth edge. I want the speaker to tilt that way.
Instead of using bog to fill up this crack here, I'm just gonna use tape. I think it's gonna be faster and cheaper. We'll find out if it's any good. I thought I could last. <sighs> I'm tired. Anyway, I've like taped up every edge that I'm going to. Um... Oh, I can hardly string a sentence together. I'm tired. It's 12. That wasn't too hard. You can see I don't give a rat's bottom about my floor. <laughs> but yeah, that was fun doing that. That was easy. You know how the Tesla has the air conditioning that has no vents? Maybe they, they um, have a pump on either side and, and they just um, adjust the pressure on the pump on that side, on that side, and if they want more wind over here, they put less pressure here and more in there, and then it'll come out there. I, I don't know. I'm just doing this as an experiment. It'll also stiffen the dash up right around the window area, which is a good thing. And uh, yeah, it's just something easy and fun. I'm gonna do lots of silly things like this. Just gotta wait for it to cool down. It's really forgiving, easy to work with. Sparkies have it easy. I made a big gap there so the glass can go like that. So this will be the last thing that I put on. That's the air conditioning or the air vent. This will be the second last thing that I put on. And this goes like that. And this is where all my electrical wires will run through. So I've got no easy way other than now to get the wires from the passenger side to the driver's side. So it's a bit hard to tell, but I've, I've just taped around where the whole air vent is going because what I plan to do is spray some gel coat in here. I've got a gun that will do the, the gel coat and then um, I'm hoping that it doesn't fall down because this stuff it really doesn't stick good to this but I haven't tried yet so hopefully everything works out and then when the gel coats laid down I'm just gonna rip this up and then pull that off and the reason I want to do that is so I'll know where to grind the slits in the dash for the air vents. All of the instructions are in Chinese or whatever language that is. I'm just doing a test run if, if this flow coat sticks to the edges. Okay, it's gone hard, or it's gone stiff enough now with the air gun to do another coat.
It's tacked off now, it's dry. So to speed things up, I've got a heater going 18 degrees or 64 Fahrenheit. It's 22 at the moment. It's 28, 29, 30. I'm doing the YouTube videos, but I can just check the temperature of everything from up here. No fires, safety first. Oh, let's see if it works. A bit premature. but the heater really worked. Oh yeah. I can work with that. Look at it. It's going to turn out good. But good enough for me, I'll be able to clean that up. This is meant to be flat. So it looks like I'm going to have to put some strengthening things in it to lift it out. Um, the other thing is I did pull it out while it was very early. So it didn't fully cure probably, but it still looks good. Okay, so the reason I've got it on an angle is so all the the flow coat doesn't fall down and, and make runs. So it's been nearly two hours. But you can see the tiny little fizzing that it's getting. And apparently you can get no fizz catalyst or sorry, there's less fizz with M200 catalyst or something. It looks absolutely beautiful at the moment. It was easy doing it with a brush. <laughs> Not that I'm saying I did a good job. It was too much work cleaning up the gun after a small bit like that. I'm devastated. It's late. And I thought that two coats was going to be good. Well, it's not two coats, so it's two coats there. But I'm just not happy with around here. I'm not confident that if I cut the glass small, it'll it'll go in. I, I just want it to be spot on. So I'm going to do another layer of gel coat. It's still wet. I just laid the last gel coat. So the tape was a bad idea. Now I gotta wait another two hours.
Oh, yeah, and it's t nearly 12. So I'm going to try some of this basalt cloth. I can't remember how much it was, but it's a lot cheaper than carbon fibre, and it says it's 10 times stronger than fiberglass. Twice as strong as steel and nearly as strong as carbon fibre at a fraction of the price. You can use it with poly or epoxy. But yeah, I'm going to put some twill weave in. And I've got some plain weave there and I'm just doing it to make it infinity strong. <laughs> and I'm thinking about using some of this um, core mat Except I'm not real confident using it around because it's got all the little lips and dips. And this is how I'll mix it at 2% and those are all the mixes I'm going to do. And I might go slightly less as I get further on while it's getting thicker. I'm sick of bailing it out. It's not good for it having water in it probably. I've got to do lots of fixing anyway, so that's nothing compared to <laughs> just one other hole I've got to fix. So it's late again, uh, another late one. I've got one more sheet of um, 600 gram to go on, but I think I might leave that for now. I'm worried about weight. Old dash was, um, was thick anyway, but I, 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 I can still add to this later. It's all unwaxed polyester resin. Okay, I'm not worried about weight anymore. <laughs> I, um, I've got all this wood here so I can screw stuff to it. And, uh, and uh, like I've shaped it so wires have a good place to travel so it looks neat. I've got flanges so I can make a speaker enclosure here eventually. Um, I, I, I know it's really thin here but that's because I didn't want to take it apart, uh, like add to it just to hold it straight. That's just so it holds it straight. Um, Cause I need to get there to there and there to there at the same distance. Anyway, more work.
Have you got it on me? Yeah. Oh, it's alright, you have to keep pointing. Have you done it? No. Uh. It's starting to look good. That's the finished bit there. Ignore that bit. But you can see it's turning out good. I should have spent a little bit more time there. These recesses turned out a lot better than I thought they were going to last night. Definitely got some fairing. But tomorrow, I'll, um, when I can make some noise, I'll pop it out. I'll probably have to drill some holes around the underneath. <coughs> I should have done that before I made the mold. You know, I should have drilled through that way before I started laying everything and then just put a little blob of tape over it. And yeah, but I didn't, but she'll be right, I'll get it. Well, I knew these were going to be a pain to get out, but you can see it lifting. Come on! Gotta go deeper. That was a bit of a mission. 
That's where I was blowing the air in. Now this side. <laughs> yeah, that one came out easier. It's because I moved this. Now all I have to do is get rid of this. And I'll show you what it's like, looks like when it's blobbed there. Yeah. That's where you're gonna steer. And there's gonna be TV screens there. Oh. How cool will that be? How cool. <laughs> and then there's, there's gonna be some big speakers in there. Oh. <laughs> and a cup holder. A cup holder. <laughs> and then you can put your phone here and it will charge. <laughs> you like it? Yeah. Uh. I definitely want to change the shape there. See that? Uh. I want to make it go like that more. I stuffed that up. It looked nice when it was in the mold, but it doesn't look nice now. But yeah. Just a bit more grinding.